Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Video number two for today is one of your favorite segments and that is the Never Seen It series. You watch me going out there Blu-ray hunting on Tuesdays and sometimes I buy films that I've never seen before in my entire life. I let you know my thoughts about these films in this segment. Do I love them? Do I hate them? And do I recommend them to you? Now there's always the best of the batch and there's always a worst, trust me, everything else falls in between. So before I get started and letting you know what I watched and how I feel about them, if you are not yet subscribed to my channel and you are brand new, you happen to stumble upon this face and you're entertained so far, then consider hitting that red subscribe down below as well as the like button, but most importantly, that notification bell so you don't miss anything in the future. So let's get started with what I loved the best. And ironically enough, we watched this last night and I'm proud to say that it's malignant. I loved Malignant because I think I had this preconceived notion in my head of what Malignant was going to be. I thought it was like a ghost story kind of. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to conquer my fear of ghosts because I'm not really big into ghost horror movies. The Conjuring I have not seen still. Sorry, Rob. Like I have not seen any of those movies. I'm not a big fan of ghost stories. And I thought that's what this was. It is not anything to do with ghosts whatsoever. Well, maybe like, you know, ghosts of your past, but not actual ghosts. This is one of the most creative horror movies that I have ever seen. You do not see the twist coming at all whatsoever. It's very difficult to even call this a horror film because there's nothing really in here except for the kills themselves that's really gross. You're more trying to figure out the mystery. It's more of a mystery horror film, which I truly love because there really aren't that many of them out there. So this was a guessing game. My mom and I were going back and forth saying, oh my God, it's this. No, it's this. No, it's this. And then I said, ooh, maybe it's a twin, you know, and we were just going back and forth trying to figure out what is going on with this film. And right, and I, I would say the last 30 minutes of the movie, it all becomes crystal clear. And it's amazing how everything is wrapped up together. James Wan is so awesome. When he wants to get his vision across, he does it in such a way. It really makes an impact. He did it with Saw and now with Malignant. Absolutely amazing. Obviously, he's had several movies in between, but these two, Saw and Malignant, are my two favorites from James Wan. So excellent. Love, love, love Malignant. It is coming out on 4K format very shortly. So if you do not have this right now on Blu-ray, I do recommend waiting for the 4K to have that upgrade. Or if you don't care about that, I believe Malignant is still on Amazon for only $12.99. That's an amazing deal. Very nice slipcover, as you can see. So I do recommend pick up this title. Go to Target. Pick it up right now or go to Amazon. There we go. Let's move on to another title that I really enjoyed, surprisingly enough. And that is Don't Breathe 2. Now, I enjoyed the first one. I heard some rumblings from other people like online and reviewers saying that this one isn't that great. I might have enjoyed this one more than the first. Am I alone in the camp that thinks this? But I really had a great time with this one. It's a home invasion story. Then there is that backstory mystery of what is going on, where the little girl came from. And I just enjoyed all of it. It's a great, fun short little ride. It's what, 90 minutes or something. And that's what horror movies should be. The 90 minute mark, that's it. It's not even really horror movie. It's more home invasion and kind of figuring out stuff about your past. Again, kind of like a mystery along the lines of Malignant, trying to find out what's going on, but highly enjoyed this one as well. So I'm happy that I picked this up during the Black Friday sale that we had this past year. So definitely watch Don't Breathe 2. If you have seen the first movie, definitely watch the sequel. Okay, next up, Cherry Falls. All right, this one is corny. But what saves this movie is Brittany Murphy. Brittany Murphy, if she was not in this film, this movie would be so dumb and so retarded. But Brittany Murphy as our lead girl that we're focused on, because there's many characters, it's a cast of characters, there's lots of people, lots of things going on and happening. But the focus is on Brittany Murphy herself. And if she was not in this film, it would not be as good slash rewatchable without her. Because she really, her acting was just so great. And I just hate that we lost her so soon in her life because she just takes this movie to a different level where it makes it more enjoyable. And 
a little bit more tolerable, if you get what I'm saying. Not that it's a horrible movie, but with the wrong cast, it could have gone way south. Like, trust me, the end, kind of predictable. I gotta be honest. It was kind of predictable there. I did kind of guess around the realm of the big reveal, but it's a fun little slasher. Like, I'm not going to totally rip it apart because it's one of those, again, 90 minute horror movies. It's just a good time. I do recommend watching it if you have not seen it already. Then we have Dark Man. Okay, this one's going to be short because per usual, Susan fell asleep. Okay, so I, I started it. I was really digging it. I was totally liking it. Liam Neeson as the lead. I, I was there. I was there with it. And then the power of sleep just came over me. And of course I woke up like right towards the very end. So the chunk in the middle, I completely missed out on, but I enjoyed so far what I was watching. So I'm going to have to rewatch this one, but I do recommend so far from what I've seen. Then we have The Howling. I had some expectations for this one. And unfortunately, I was a little let down. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of werewolf movies. I do have to say that right off the bat. However, I'm trying to open up the mind a little bit and be more accepting to other creatures because my main creature is a vampire. Like, I love vampire movies, but you gotta, you know, go outside of your comfort zone and go with werewolves or the mummy or, you know, the creature from the Black Lagoon, you know, things like that, and try to embrace the other monsters in, in the collection, so to speak. So, werewolf... This one just did not do it for me. I was really disappointed with this one. I thought it was going to be just way more scary. And I don't even know. I just, the reactions in this film were not realistic. I mean, here you have a werewolf, a human transforming into a werewolf right in front of you. And the women were just not reacting at all. They're just like, not screaming, not doing anything. And this horrific transformation is happening in front of you and you're not reacting. Like, how do you not react? Like, that's not realistic to me. So that just threw me right there. If anything, I was laughing at this film. <laughs> I was really laughing at this. So do I recommend that you go out and run and get the howling? No, I don't. Now I understand why there's copies still at my local Best Buy. Okay, I honestly have to admit. I mean, I'm happy it's in my collection. I'm not going to get rid of it. I am going to keep it, but it's one of those you can wait for a sale. Definitely wait for a sale. 15 bucks, then go ahead and pick it up. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. Kind of right in the middle. Okay. Final exam. Okay, this one, this one is a goofy slasher. Very goofy slasher. It's one of those very early horror films where it's just not politically correct and the guys are cheeseball idiots and goofballs and the girls are just ugh, with no brains in their heads whatsoever. It's one of those horror films. I think my main problem with this movie was that, you know, spoiler alert, but I am going to say this, there's no motivation for what the killer for what the killer is doing. Why they're doing what they're doing, there's no explanation. None. There's no explanation. At the very end, they kill him, and that's it. You don't find out the reason why, which really irks me. But I guess some people enjoy that because sometimes there is no motivation. Sometimes, sometimes people are just that sick in the head that they go ahead and do things like that. So I can understand that aspect, but you know me, I like a reason. I don't like to be left hanging. So final exam, fun little slasher, but you will be left with that question. So I don't know if you're like me and you need resolution, you may not be the biggest fan of this movie but I am going to keep it. I will watch that one again. This one was fun. Lake Placid. Betty White steals the show. Absolutely. She is ultimately fantastic, but this is a great fun creature feature. Who doesn't want a big ass alligator or a crocodile? I mean, if you want a big croc movie, I recommend this one and also alligator or a big alligator, I should say. They're both awesome. Amazing movies. Very well done with the special effects to create the, the alligator, the croc, whatever it is in this movie. So that was great. A little, sometimes a little bit of jump scares here and there. You're not expecting the, the, what is this? An alligator or a crocodile? <laughs> I keep saying both and I don't know what it is. Do we, is it on here? No. 
but whatever, whatever it is, alligator or crocodile, you never know when it's going to show up. And it's usually at the most unlikely time and you got your jump scares through there. So that was good. The cast had great chemistry. This is a fun movie. So I do recommend that you do pick this one up. Absolutely. We got the rebooted Slumber Party Massacre. Okay, so the original, kind of a classic, got to admit, I am going to rewatch that one again soon because I did have fun with it. But this one, this one was okay. It wasn't the best. However, what really saves this one for me is there is a twist, like right in the middle of the movie where I didn't see it coming. And I was like, oh, okay, this is the way we're going to go. And then it turns into the, into the predictable. It takes predictable alley and it goes down that way. But I mean, it's a cute little movie. There's really nothing like wow about it. It's kind of, you know what's going to happen. You know this character is related to this character. And that is their motivation, I guess I could say. So I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. You don't need to go out and buy this right away. If it's like $5.99 on Amazon soon, then pick it up. But before that, I wouldn't bother. But it does have a nice slipcover. This one I had fun with. April Fool's Day. I obviously watched it on April Fool's Day because you know me and I love a theme. So what's great about this film, it has a great 80s ensemble cast, including Biff from Back to the Future. Mom and I were watching this and I was like, is that Biff? And she's like, yeah, it is. So that was great. It was fun to see him in a slasher horror movie. Now this one, I would Again, you're you're trying to put the pieces together. I'm I'm watching a lot of like mystery horror movies this round, I'm noticing. But this one again, you're trying to figure out what is exactly going on, what's happening. And then I called it. I did. I'm very proud of myself. I called it and I was correct. And it does have a twist at the very end of the movie, which I highly enjoyed because horror films very rarely have like a great twist like this one does like that usually never happens so that was refreshing this movie was refreshing a great palate cleanser if you will so april fool's day again is a fun slasher i do recommend you watch it at least once in your life okay at least once especially if you are a fan of horror movies then you should especially slashers okay let's take a break from the slashers and the horror just for a second play catch up with some of the collections that i was watching for last month the audrey hepburn collection you know this is my girl i love audrey so i'm proud to say i watched every single one except what is it war and peace because that movie is three hours long and i did not have time for war and peace so i will get to that one at a different time but every other movie i loved and I adored because it's Audrey. She was so elegant, so talented, so classy. And it's such a shame that we lost her way too early. So I'm proud that I finally got through the collection except for one. And it just reinforces how much I love her and her acting talent and how just beautiful she was as a person. So there's my little love fest for Audrey. If you love classic movie stars, I definitely recommend that you pick up this collection because it is a great one. It has all of her classic, great movies in here. So definitely get it. I think you can find it around the $30 mark on Amazon. I have seen that. So definitely try to pick it up if you are a fan. All right. I know you guys are going to be proud of me because Susan finished and watched the Rocky Collection, and Creed 1 and 2. I was on a roll and I did not want to stop. So I went and watched Creed 1 and 2, which I have seen before, but I just wanted the, the Rocky train to keep on going. What could I say? Overall, highly enjoyed the entire franchise. This is one of those iconic franchises that everyone should watch because it's just so inspirational. He's the underdog. You want him to win every single time and you know, he, he wins and then he gets back down in life and he's trying to rebuild. And it's such a great overall story and franchise. And it won Best Picture. Rocky won Best Picture, which kind of boggles my mind just a little bit, but I can understand it at the same time. I mean, this is what Sly is known for. This and Rambo. So I got to get into Rambo next <laughs> because I have not watched that one yet, but highly enjoyed Rocky. My mom and I had a great time watching it together because she hasn't seen the movies in forever, so that was a great bonding experience for us. That's why we like watching these movies together, because it bonds us together. Okay. The Essential Clint Eastwood Collection. Now, I only watched Million Dollar Baby and Mystic River from this collection. 
Mystic River is just amazing. If you have not seen Mystic River, it's a fantastic movie. It breaks your heart, breaks your soul. It just, it makes you feel every single emotion. Sean Penn won for Best Actor for that film. Absolutely incredible performances. Also, Tim Robbins won for Best Supporting Actor as well. So you definitely, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you watch Mystic River. And then Million Dollar Baby. <laughs> Talk about crying your eyes out and just feeling sad. And, and the I was on a boxing train, like Million Dollar Baby, Rocky. I was watching a lot of boxing movies too. But both movies are absolutely incredible. And if there's any Clint Eastwood movies that I recommend, it's those two and Richard Jewell. So definitely try to pick up those, watch them on streaming, wherever they're available to you, because they're essential. Hence the essential. <laughs> essential in the title. They are essential Clint Eastwood movies to watch. Okay, let's get back into the horror, shall we? This one I watched last night before my live chat and I did not hate it because it was entertaining and that is Jack Frost. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I'm laughing at myself. No, I surprisingly enough, you would think that I would hate this movie. I would be throwing it against my wall. This is so stupid, but I was laughing. So therefore that means Susan was entertained. So therefore, I enjoyed the movie. I only hate movies when I feel like they're absolutely stupid and provide no entertainment value whatsoever. And that is not Jack Frost. I was entertained because I was laughing. So this was a great fun watch for me. I'm looking forward to the sequel because, and I have that one as well because I want to know how he comes back. So Jack Frost was fun. Stupid fun, but it was fun. This is the regret pile. Why did I buy this? I have no idea. The return of Swamp Thing. I think because I was like, oh, I'm covering it up. It's an MVD title and I'm kind of into collecting the MVD titles just a little bit. And I saw this one and I do remember it kind of from my childhood. So that is the nostalgia factor for me. But this is dumb. This is a dumb movie. Heather Locklear is the worst actress ever in this movie. She is so horrible, so awful. All of her dialogue, they make it as a joke. She's joking. Everything she says, she says it as a sarcastic little joke. And everyone's supposed to be like, ha ha, she's so funny. Oh my gosh, she's pretty and funny. No, <laughs> it just, it came across as so stupid. I was surprised to see that this is a DC product. I had no idea that Swamp Thing was part of the DC universe, but apparently it is. I need to like update my my information in my brain. But like this was, we're just going to put it down. There's no need to rush out and get the return of Swamp Thing. I would say if you find it at the Dollar Tree, maybe then pick it up, but you don't need to buy it anytime soon. All right. What was this? <laughs> Let's just talk about it. I don't know. I had higher expectations because it's from Arrow, but that really shouldn't matter, should it? The cover looked really cool. I was like, yes, this is going to be an awesome movie, an awesome slasher. Right off the bat, I should have known. You have this woman coming home from work, I'm assuming. Her whole house is dark. Within the first five minutes, she's undressing and taking her clothes off in the middle of her front doorway, just exposing her boobs to the wind like this. And I'm like, what are we doing? Where are we going with this? And then the killer here, right here in the middle, reveals himself and he's there in the house. Does she run away? Is she screaming? No. And I'm like, that's not realistic. I would be running away. Why are you exposing yourself in your front doorway? The entire thing just didn't make any sense. And then the story takes off from there. It's dumb dialogue. It's a very weak script. I don't know. I just was unhappy with this. And then the very end is laughable. Trust me, it is laughable. So do I recommend that you pick up Deadly Games? No, I do not. This is the reason why I pick these up and do these videos. So that way I can save you money. Don't bother, okay? But I didn't hate it. <laughs> I didn't hate it because at some point it was so ridiculous that I was entertained and I was laughing. So that means I didn't hate it. Graduation day. Vinegar syndrome title. I was excited about this one. I really was. And I just felt let down. It was, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I wasn't like, wow, 
This is from the early days of horror where nothing really had to make sense. There was absolutely no budget, but it wasn't on the Halloween level where it's like, wow, it's an iconic movie. It's not like that whatsoever. This was just a letdown for me. I guess the little twist and the reveal of who's doing everything is kind of a good twist, like a good reveal, a good revelation. But overall, the movie as a whole, you don't need to buy it. You really don't. Again, let me do the buying and you don't have to worry about this. But it's an awesome slipcover. <laughs> I will say that. It's a great, awesome slipcover. It's got Vanna White in it. Okay, that's all I have to say. I was like, is that Vanna White? Yes, it was. It's got the chick from Wheel of Fortune. You don't need to buy it, okay? So now let's get to the final two that I hated. <laughs> let's get to it. Okay, candidate number one, this is always the best part, you love this, is Killer Movie. Okay, so I thought, I had hoped that this movie was going to be a little bit better because of the cast that's involved. You have Paul Wesley from Vampire Diaries who played Stefan. It was like my favorite show. Loved it. I actually met him and he's a great, super nice guy. So I was, okay, high hopes. And then we got Kaylee Cuoco from Big Bang Theory. Okay, she's good too. You got Leighton Meester. All right, we got a decent cast. That's all they had was a decent cast. The problem with this movie is that it goes from like a behind the scenes documentary style like interview thing to an actual horror movie. And going back and forth like that was not a good style. They should have chosen either a documentary style horror movie or an actual horror movie. Don't go back and forth in between because you're confusing the audience and it just didn't, it interrupted the flow, if you know what I'm saying. Like every time they would be getting somewhere, they would insert someone with their opinion behind the scenes. It was just really distracting. So because of that, and plus it just wasn't a good movie. It just wasn't a good movie in general. And a lot of the, a lot of the, it just wasn't good. It just wasn't good. That's all I'm going to say about it. So because you let me down and it was a waste of my, what, 89 minutes killer movie, you're getting tossed. Ooh, that hit the closet. But that's not the only one. I'm highly, highly, highly disappointed in the last movie that I hate. And that is Silent Night because I had higher expectations for this film because I thought it was Kira Knightley in a horror movie. Now it is Kira Knightley and we're so used to her in period pieces like Pride and Prejudice. But this, I believe, was not marketed correctly. Now here's what I mean by this because when you see this, okay, when you see this cover and it's like, okay, it's Christmas time. And she's a couple. This is her husband, her son. All right. And then it kind of has the tagline, here's to the end of the world. And it says equal parts charming and horrifying. I'm getting the impression that Kira Knightley and her husband are inviting their family and friends over. And it's going to be a little bit like ready or not or you're next, like kind of in that style of a bunch of people in a house together and things start going off the rails. Not really. That's not really what happens. It's more of an, uh, more of an, uh, more of an environmental problem. There we go. And that's affecting them. So they decide to make a decision of what they want to do. And they do that. And that's the end of the movie. This is not a horror movie. There's nothing scary about this movie. It's more of like, we're in this situation. How are we going to deal with this? And I'm just disappointed overall because I feel like I was misled. If I knew that the real plot was the plot line of the movie, I never would have bought this. I never would have. I thought this was Keira Knightley in a horror film and this is just Keira Knightley in crap. Okay, so that's all I have to say about it. So for that reason alone, Keira Knightley in crap, you know what happens. You're getting thrown away. So that is my opinion about everything that I've been watching over the past couple of weeks. Let me know. Let me know down below your thoughts about the films that I mentioned or what are the bad films that you have been watching lately. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.